Guys, um, so uh, as as y'all all know, okay, Impulsum is uh, is one hundred percent the company. I'm the I'm the founder of it, the CEO. Zach is is the founder uh, and and CEO of and the president of, okay, Thoroughbred Marketing, okay. And Alexis handles all of the Nestle side, and she is the CEO of Solipricity, okay. So that's kind of the way it worked, okay. We're all in the same position, right? But with that being said, uh, I did mentor Alexis, correct? Okay, but when you make it through the executive branch management, that's kind of cool. You want to lower that a little bit? What's really cool is when you when you complete the down. Um, the, what's really cool is when you complete the training by this time April, by this time March, when you're managing about 10 to 15 people, right? When you make it to the manager training, even though I'm your, I'm your coach or I'm your mentor, even, even though uh, I might be the one that trained you up to management, we're on the same level. And isn't that, isn't that pretty cool? Right, like me and Alexis are business partners. Me and Zach are business partners. It, it doesn't matter, okay, who went through the training faster. It doesn't matter who went through the training the smoothest, okay, because if it was, I would have lost that, that, mine was like a roller coaster, okay? Um, and so I think it's pretty cool to talk about the industry because I think a ton of people uh, see CEO before they see me, and, and that's not really it, okay? Um, I'm really just uh, sorry if, if you're not religious. Um, I don't, I don't want to force my religion on anyone. But I genuinely do think I'm a product of, of, of God in my upline. Okay, our upline is is Richard Anderson. The Rich upline. Day. Okay, Richard, Richard Anderson. Rich. Do we know what market he runs? He does. He does a a lot of ton of different ones actually. But does he, do we know what city he's in? Dallas. Dallas. Okay. So I did. The, I actually completed the training in Dallas, Texas. Okay. I was born and raised in San Antonio. Okay. Uh, lived there for a number of years. Okay. And then actually got hired. So my story is a little different, okay? And this is why I wanted to talk about it. So I actually started the training in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, so I got hired onto a, a marketing firm like this. It was called Fresh Success Marketing, okay? And I got hired there and actually was um, an entry level there for under the name of someone named Chang Kanavan. Okay, she's actually the person who hired Richard. Does that make sense? Yeah. Everyone understand that family tree? Cool, so I got hired by Chang. She's from Vietnam. Um, she came over here to play professional tennis. She actually made it to the US Open. I think she was like top 250 at one point. Sorry, can you spell her name for me? I always miss Chang that. is spelled Trang. T-R-A-N-G, but you pronounce it Chang. Mama Chang. Cool. Um, yeah, so she's been in the business for about 10 years. Uh, she, she makes well into the set, uh, six figures. Okay, almost, almost near the seven. And she's something that we call in the business called a regional consultant. And so I came into the business just like y'all. Prior to this, uh, I wasn't anything special. Okay, I, I made my resume look special. Okay. <laughs> right? Like I, I bought the cardstock paper at Office Depot. Um, and so I sent my resume out. And so I was actually in college for uh, student athlete. So I actually got a full ride to a D1 university in Texas for cross country and track. Okay, was gonna go actually the professional running route. Uh, got the chance to run the JO, which is called Junior Olympics. Uh, missed out on the Olympics by like a couple of spots, actually, two to be exact. I don't know why I'm taking it, like I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, made it to the Junior Olympics for the mile, ran that in about four minutes. Um, and the qualifying time was actually three minutes and 58 seconds. So, yeah, two seconds is a lot of running. Okay, it was, it, was, it was a big gap. It was like from here to like territory. Okay, uh, and so with that being said, did not go. I'm so glad I did. It was actually a blessing in disguise because I, I did beat myself up over it. Anybody here competitive? Okay, so like think of, think of like competitiveness and another competitive person <coughs> made a kid and that was me. Okay, because both my parents are super competitive. So they just bred like, if you lose, you're a loser, right? Like it down in, yeah, right, they're intense. Okay, and so beat myself up about it. So I was like, ah, you know what? Let, let me just be really, really good at my, my major, so my major, I got my major in civil engineering, okay, um, did that, I really did that, um, I don't know how, C's get degrees, okay, what, what is it, wiki how, best friend ever, no, what was it, Quizlet, they do not have to, they do, they do not have to, check, hands up, check all the way, paid all that money, um, oh my god, they own my life. I have Anyways, <laughs> to a fun fact, they do not have Quizlet for thermodynamics. Okay. Well, I know, right? I should have made it. I should have made money on it. Um, and so I did that and, and went the civil engineering route. So I, if you don't know, here's, here's the lifeline. Here's like the, the, the timeline for a civil engineer, okay, or any engineer, really. And so the way it works is, okay, you go to, you get, you go, you get your four-year four degree. I was able to complete it in about two years because I graduated with a lot of credits. 
and did internships all the way through. Absolutely not paid for. Okay. Anybody had a, had a paid internship? Mm -hmm. Wow, y'all are talented. Okay. Did you not pay for engineering? Okay. Like you have to pay for someone's coffee most of the time. Okay. Um, and so with that being said, did a internship. It sounded so cool to say, yeah, I'm an intern at Toyota Engineering Company. In reality, I had coffee. I smelled like coffee all day long because that's all I was getting. Like you ever talk about like a, I'm not gonna say the word, but you know what word I'm talking about. Like a, a paper pusher. <laughs> okay, cool. So we all don't know the word I'm talking about. So weird. You never heard of that? Okay, cool. We'll talk about it later. All right. <laughs> so a paper pusher, all it is is like you're just filing stuff. Like it, it, everything they did not want to do, you did. That's what an intern is, okay? And it was, any, anybody else that had an interactive internship, good, congrats. That was not my life. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did that, and so I did that with the promise, okay, the, uh, a very boneless promise, that I would be receiving a job offer at the end of my at the end of my degree. And so I've been working on it, right? That this is 2019, and so going into it, right? 2020 happens, and we all know 2020 is what? COVID. COVID. COVID okay. So it's actually I think it to the dot. I think it was like 13 days before my uh, internship ended, and I was supposed to be offered a job, right? Like. Anybody wants to college here? Yeah, I feel you. Okay. And um, with that being said, if you didn't enter, enter college, it doesn't make sense. Like you just saved a lot more money. Congrats. I wish I was you. Okay. Uh, anybody that went to college knows that we really paid for the experience. Yeah. Anybody else feel like that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, enjoyed I, I enjoyed it too. <laughs> we we paid we paid we paid all this debt for for uh, something I like to call a job hunting license. Okay, because uh, a degree really just guarantees us a lot of entitlement, really, and a hint of something else, but never any job. If you do, most of the time you do get hired with a job, but sometimes you don't. I was not one of those because 13 days before my internship ended, uh, COVID hit, and they ended school. Okay, and they they ended school. They said, "Hey, everyone, go home. There's no more classes. We're canceling it." This is like March of like 2020. And remember, everyone remember like March of 2021, it was like, you didn't know if it was serious or not. So you're like still going out and you're like, ah, mask. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then they're like, shut down. Like Texas is like, hey, we're on shutdown. And you know in Texas is like, hey, we're on shutdown because we don't give a crap about anything. Right. right? And so and, and not proud about that in any way fashion. Okay. But, but you know, when Texas shuts down, you're like, okay, something's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. So then I was like turning on the news and I'm like, actually like, what is this COVID thing? Okay. And so uh, I get told, hey, we're actually on a job freeze and the company actually laid off 6% of their bottom line. And so five days before I'm finishing, I get told, hey, all the last three years of work I did were for nothing. And so I was like, well, man, I fired up indeed. And anybody like that, like, well, Give yourself 30 minutes and you're like, all right, well, let me go check if my resume is uh, updated. <laughs> right? So I'm like, back, back, to, back, to, back, back to Word, okay? Uh, it was not updated, <laughs> okay? And so I did that, started pushing my, my uh, application everywhere and anywhere. Y'all ever get like that mass apply button? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that button. Right? Like out anything and everything. Anybody been so low at a time where you're like, you will take any job possible? Yes. Hands down. Like I was like, I'll go back to Chick-fil-A. All right, hands down. Like I will go back to saying my pleasure twenty five times and faking a smile, right, all day long. And so it was really funny because it says, "Hey, select all that apply, like your your categories." And um, my, my my resume was pretty decorated. Okay, I, I I'm I'll be humble in saying it, but it, it was pretty decorated. I grew I graduated thirteenth in my class out of uh, thirteen hundred people. Uh, I graduated top one percent, uh, ton like a full ride scholarship for running. Okay, so like I wasn't I, I was proud about college. But I feel like it really was like, I didn't learn from reading a book. Like I didn't learn from reading a textbook. I didn't learn from sitting down and staring at someone give a lecture for 45 minutes and then going home and, and actually dissecting what, what this guy said. Because if you, anybody engineering, anybody like did any kind of like STEM? Okay, so if you don't know, right, the, the farther you go into the classes, the more and more the professors don't wanna be your friend. Yeah. The, the, like they're literally just there so the college can pay for their study. So they have to teach as like a, a, a side effect. So they don't give a crap about you. Like you'll show up to, to study hours or hall, uh, hall study hall. Yeah, study hall. yeah like there's their office hours and they won't even be there. Yeah. And, and, and one time like I really needed help. So I showed up and this guy was like, well, why would I be at my study hall? He's like, I'm, I'm, I have a PhD. I'm like, 
I'm trying to get one too, right? <laughs> Help me out, right? And so then he had a test and I failed it. Um, and so with that being said, right, got on Indeed and, and it said, hey, select all the categories that apply. So I hit mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, um, civil engineering, and then oh, I already said mechanical. So I hit mechanical engineering, right? And if you, if you know the alphabet, right? Right above mechanical engineering, right, is marketing, okay? I accidentally checked marketing. Jeez. <laughs> Bro, I swear. Okay, like I accidentally checked it, hit apply, and all these marketing things came up, and I'm like, holy smokes, it sounds so interesting. So I saw first success, and, and it sounded so familiar, and the reason why was because one of my internships that I applied for was a floor above the marketing for my, I, I started that. It was just like a six month gap. And so when I saw the address, I was like, okay, something, something, something's up. All right, so so it, was, it was like, okay, like something about this is standing out. So I hit apply. They, anyone feel like they like we applied and then like they called you back like in four seconds? Mm -hmm. Holy smokes. I was like, why? They're good. <laughs> right, like, they're good. And they're like, hey, we actually checked out your resume. And I'm like, yeah, they checked it out. <laughs> I was like pulling it up and I'm like, let me see what they saw. And I spelled a word wrong and I was like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so they're like, hey, we actually have a little bit of a, uh, it seems like you're a little bit more fit for a, a management and training role. Would you be more interested? I'm like, what is this again? Right, and so they say like marketing, and I'm like, cool, marketing sounds fancy, but it's also very general. What are we talking about? And I was in, I was actually um, in a Zoom meeting that time, and so they actually switched all of our finals to Zoom. Immediately, I was like, I'm gonna pass, <laughs> right? Because if it's on Zoom, you can have another browser open, okay? Right, y'all are way more ethical than me because none of y'all are like thinking the same way as me. No, all right, cool. And so, <laughs> so that being said, um. They called me and they're like, hey, we, the only available spot we, the spot we have is Tuesday at 10 p.m. I mean, 10 a.m. Um, and I don't, it's so funny that I remember this exact time because it was the exact same time as my thermodynamics class that I hated. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? Cool, book me in, book me in, that's fine. I, I was planning on not attending. Right? I was planning on not attending. It's so funny that I was like saying no to jobs while I was needing one. I was like, oh, it was so funny. Right? And so Tuesday comes up and I'm, uh, it was so weird. But he's like, hey, if you're going to be on the Zoom and you're taking a test, you have to be in a polo. I was like, why? I'm like, okay, cool, I'll wear a polo, but top hat only, right? Because <laughs> we're on Zoom. And so I go, and then 10 minutes before, he's like, hey, an emergency happened. I'm rescheduling your final to two days after. And like, you ever had a professor reschedule a final? I've never, see, I've never seen a, a final rescheduled in all the years I did schooling, right? So I was like, okay. And then I got, right after that, I got the reminder that like my, my first round, the first round was starting. I'm like, I'm already in a polo, so, let, so let, me, let, me, let me see what this is about. So I get in there, right, and I'm like, I'm, I'm so fed up of internships, and I'm so fed up of everything, that I'm like, I'm not doing another internship. Like, forget that. And if I, if I end up slipping and cursing, I apologize. Uh, I don't really mean it in any derogatory or, or way, but it's also a free country, so. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it's your fault if you get really <laughs> hurt. Um, and so with that being said, Right, I, I get on this Zoom and this guy's, this guy's talking about the business and I'm like, this sounds interesting, it sounds interesting. And then he says this one line and I'll never forget it. He says, if you're looking for an internship, this is not the place to be. He's like, we are looking for managers who wanna work hard, right? Wanna work with Fortune 100 clients and wanna coach and develop and lead other people. And two people left. He's like, hey, I'm looking for an internship. He's like, okay, that's fine, bye. And this guy was really intense, okay? If y'all Zooms were probably a lot different. We're, times have changed, okay? And I was like, no, it was uh, Chris Delosier. He's, still, he's an owner in the business now. He's a program manager now. And I was like, not internships, woo! I was like, no more coffee? But like, at this time, I'm sick of coffee. I'm sick of pay uh, pushing papers. And so when he said, no more, like this is not an internship gig, this is a full-time position that we want people to work hard, and not everyone's supposed to make it. Raise your hand if you're competitive. When someone says, Hey, not everyone's supposed to make it and it's hard. What is your brain telling you? Ben. <laughs> so in my head, I'm like, how hard is it? Right? And that's what got me. That was so funny. Right? And so he talked about it. I don't even know what the rest he said. All I know is he was excited and happy and, and everything. Was, there was music in the background. And I'm like, all right, go. I don't even care about that. I just, I just know what he said. Not everyone's supposed to make it. So I'm going to make it. So they, uh, they call me back and they say I made it forward to the second rounds. And, and they want me to do it in person. How many of us had in-person interviews? Okay, I was, I was in a whole different state. 
I was in a whole different city, in a whole different city, and they want me to travel back for a second round. And I'm like, absolutely not, I can't do that. They're like, hey, we might be able to do it over Zoom. And I'm like, cool, I can only do that. And so my mentor, right, uh, he points your upline really quick. I wanna see who's, who's, who's that line. Point to your upline, point to your upline. Okay, cool, right. Uh, the, the first thing I finally realized when I ended up doing my second round interview, okay, and I ended up getting a call, I did not take the position, by the way. I, I did not like the person that interviewed me. How many of y'all like the person you interviewed? Yes. <laughs> y'all have to raise y'all's hands because they're here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, personally me, I did not I did not vibe with them. I did not like anything about it. Okay, I thought it was, it was like uh, not the best of meetings, right? And I was like, that sucks so much. How many of us have left uh, an opportunity that we really, like, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Loved everything they said. I just, I, when they told me I would be mentored by him, I was like, I can't do it. How many of us have left, have left a job because of a manager? Right, I'm gonna, yeah. okay, isn't it crazy that we like genuinely like the job but we lost it because of a manager or another person's reaction? And so I was like, dang, like, I really, it's, it sounded nice to me. And so I get a call again, and this, this lady's like, hey, hi, nice to meet you in, in an accent, right? She's like, my name's Chang. She's like, I heard you interviewed with our company earlier and you didn't take the position. I'm like, yeah. She's like, hey, what, what could the person I've interviewed have done to keep you? And that was the first time I heard like a, a question that like got me thinking. Cause like anybody ever answer a question in an interview and you're like, mm. I said that, <laughs> right? You're like, and they start writing and you're like, I crushed that answer. <laughs> and then every, in reality, 15 other people said the exact same answer. Cause we all Googled what to say. <laughs> we all Googled what questions to ask in an interview, right? Same way. Okay. And so she's like, Hey, what could they have done to keep you? And I'm like, Oh, Dang, that's a good question. And I told her, I was like, I genuinely just want uh, uh, a place of work where I feel, I, like I'm willing to take less pay for a better culture. I told her, I was like, I'm willing to take a, a pay cut in order to get a good, a good culture where I, I, I don't feel like I'm working anymore. And she's like, okay. She's like, let me show you that culture. Let me know when you're in town. I like to take you out to lunch. And I was like, who do you say you are again? She's like, I'm Chang, I'm the CEO of Fresh Sales. I'm like, CEO just called me. I'm like, the CEO just, the CEO just called me. My resume is good. <laughs> so I, I came in with a lot of cockiness and a lot of entitlement. So uh, three, three weeks passed by, I, I, I come into town and it's really crazy because I said, she asked me what time I come into town. I said the 24th, right? She texted me on the 23rd. Hey, I understand you're coming in tomorrow. Uh, back into town, let me know if you're still up for lunch. And I'm like, wow, this CEO, like is so on top, so structured that in CEO of running a business, can we agree? Stuff happens. Like they're busy, right? Like I see Zach and, and Alexis, I'm like, wow, they're, they're, they do a lot of stuff, right? So for her to remember three weeks in the future about someone who she's never seen, never met, and be like, okay, hey, just so you know, I'm so up for, for lunch if you want to. Someone that accountable, I'm like, okay, I, I want to work for someone like that. So I took her up on lunch and I'm like, she closed me a hands down on the business. She was, she was a godly woman. She had morals and ethics of values, right? Like she wasn't someone that looked at seniority as like, I'm the CEO, don't talk to me. Right, like she, she, she humanized herself so well that I felt like I could be her one day. And so I started in the company and um, it was weird because I've, I've never, I've, no one's ever gone knocked on my door. I guess I live in a, a very, I live in a very small neighborhood back in San Antonio. So I guess like there was like not enough territory anyway. And so no one really ever knocked my door. So I didn't know when they said like door, I'm like, cool, that's awesome. I was like, you, you mean to tell me like, I talk about water tell you about it because you drink it you get it I get paid for that and I'm like Chang why is that so easy I'm like Chang like you you, you you I was like okay okay there's a catch right so I was very skeptical of the business very skeptical and the reason why because it did not make sense to me that I could go out there with a mouthpiece and and my my, my, my voice my knuckles and and a, and a paper and and talk to customers and get paid for it right and I'm like okay there, there has to be a catch like it's, it sounds too easy Right, and so I got there with my mentor that I didn't like at the time, right? And, and I was like, okay. She told me she's like, hey, you don't have to get along with your manager, or you don't have to get along with your mentor. You just have to, you just have to respect them. I was like, okay, cool, sounds good, right? So saw him at the first door, right? Made a sale, and immediately, right? Okay, think about this. I was when I joined, I was cocky, I was arrogant, I was entitled, and I thought I was above everyone else. <laughs> with those four qualities, can anybody really learn? No, no, right? <laughs> Oh my gosh. And so I saw he, he did the first one and he made a sale on the first door. 
And I was like, that pitch was terrible. <laughs> Get in there. I, and like, I'm, I'm, I'm a day one, and I'm like, no body language. I'm like grading him as if, as if I have fruit on the tree. And isn't it funny? People with the, the least amount of, um, uh, I guess, accolades have the most amount of opinions. I was the exact same way. And so a lot of a lot of when I started the business was was getting rid of my entitlement and getting rid of uh, of my my arrogance. Okay, it's okay to be confident, but but the difference between confident and cockiness is who's the one edifying you. Anybody know? Anybody not know what edification means? Okay, edification is just gratitude towards an, uh, oneself, like either yourself or your upline. So when we say edify your upline, what you're doing is you're talking to them in a way that makes them. I guess glorified or or giving them credit. Make sense? So if you self self edification never works. Okay, self edification does not work. That's all I did. I would walk in there like, ha, just did six sales, doing the math. My paycheck's gonna be this much, and I would talk about it. And like, people were, like people would be like, roll their eyes, and I'm like, you're mad, <laughs> right? And and it was a lot of no no one wanted to be on my team. I I could not build a team for the life of me. I could not build a team for the life of me. Got through, my, uh, got, got into entry level. Could not build a team for the life of me, and it was because who would want to be led by someone who thinks they're better by them uh, than everyone else? And I genuinely could, could not ever understand that, right? I, I, I come from I come from a, a place where I grew up in poverty. Okay, I lived a lot of years in Mexico, and and I only had one pair of shoes till I was like fourteen. I tried my first my first fast food restaurant when I was fifteen. Everyone knows, right, about that story. All right, it was McDonald's. Um, it took me two hours on a bus ride to get there. Okay, I had saved up, right? I would, I would go to my friend's house. I remember this now. I, I, I didn't mention this on the first time. But I would go to my friend's house and go in between their couches and, like, scrape the coins and bring them back home. And so uh, I had to be really good at talking because the more better I was talking, the more friends that would invite me over. Oh. All right, right, right. Isn't so funny? And so uh, when I was 15, I, my, my family, right, my, my parents are super young. They had, me, they had me at 18. Yes. And they had my brothers at 16. So they had three kids. My older brothers, they're twins. They're 24 years old, 25 years old now. 25 years old. And, and with that being said, uh, we, were, we were a family of six by the time I was four years old and in one bedroom. And like, no, no, we, we didn't put like the, the, you ever seen a mattress? There's like a mattress, then there's like the bottom of the springboard. Mm -hmm. Or the, was it, has it got a spring? Yeah, box, okay. spring. box spring? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. So that box situation, and then that. So we took that off because we needed more space. And and I didn't know cold, I didn't know hot showers existed until I was like 15, around there. And so uh, it was so cool because when I, when I finally got the chance to move to Pensacola, Florida for a little bit, I saw a shower head for the first time. That, that stuff was so cool to me. So I would, I would take, I would try to take as, as short of showers, but still, because the water pools, right? And um, I would get so excited about the, the shower because back then in Mexico, what you had to do was wake up at six in the morning, go fill up these canteens or um, it's like the the jars. Buckets. I always forget these. The bu like buckets of like, but they're clay. Everyone know what I'm talking about? With the handles on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so like those vases type things, and you have to go and fill them up, right? And so with that being said, it, it would uh, you have to do that in the scoop plastic cups and then pour it on yourself. But you only, you, you try to make three buckets last between a family of six because it was me and my brothers, me and my brothers, so we could only carry one bucket each because they're so heavy and it was like a, a mile hike, right? And so um, when I got a shower head, I'm like, where does this water come from? Like uh, literally half of the shower is like, where's this water coming from, <laughs> right? And so um, I, I grew up I grew up from a, a, a definitely humble upbringing. And so little things still excite me. Like I still get excited like about the littlest things. It's crazy. Right? Like I got excited about a sign the other day. Right? I was like, well, that's a really cool sign. It's like reflective, right? Um, it's totally off topic. And so starting the, starting, the, uh, starting, the, starting the business, I was very humbled by, by sincerity. I was always told, hey, after high school, you go where? College. College. And you work there, you do that for four years in order to get a what? Degree. 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 And you need a degree. <laughs> Right, you need a degree in order to get a good job. job. And we worked there for 40 years until we retire at what age? 65. 60, 65. Now, who came up with that age? Isn't that so funny? Right, and we know who came up with it if you heard the meeting. But, right, like I was always told that. So when I came into this industry, I saw a 33-year-old woman who has 
more than six figures in the bank, has her parents retired, and three properties under her name, and three kids, each of them with, with 100 grand in savings in their name. And I'm like, okay. Maybe there's a different lifestyle of living. Right, like, like maybe I had to, I, I had to see the buckets of, uh, that were showers. Maybe I had to see 15 years without fast food in order to appreciate mentorship. Right, and so, so the one thing I wanted to talk about that, that you can take away is your, your the, uh, I always talk about this a lot and, and it's a big thing in our business, right? Like the event plus your reaction determines your outcome. Okay, the event plus your reaction determines your outcome. I, I, th I don't think I was special in any type of way. I don't think I was talented in any type of way, but what I do strongly believe is that I was blissfully ignorant to how hard my life was. And that allowed me to be positive in situations where most people were, were negative. And that's why I really appreciate it because my association at the time was very positive. I didn't, I didn't know that my mom had four credit cards that were maxed out. I didn't know that we were constantly moving, right? I, I went to 16 different middle schools and, and high schools and elementaries, and I didn't know that was because we were getting evicted of every single one. I didn't know that we would move to Florida back and forth because my dad would get work at roofing only when the hurricanes hit. So the moment the hurricane hit, we were going to the hurricane so that we could find work for roofing because it, it's, it's in demand, make sense? I, I didn't know these things because my association around me was so blissfully positive. Right, they weren't lying to me. Not once did they lie to me. Not once did they say we were rich. Not once did they say we were, we were not struggling, but they were positive about our, 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 our events. My parents were so positive that when I, when I said, hey mom, like the, 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 this kid in, in school, he keeps getting these like boxes that are red and a smiley face on it. What is that? That's the coolest lunch box ever. She, and, and she starts crying. And she's like, that's called a happy meal. Like, that's so cool. All I used to do was like foil and like tacos and stuff. And so um, she was, I remember it was like two, a month after that, that's when I tried my first fast food restaurant. And so like the, the associate, association around me was so positive that my, my reaction was only allowed to be positive. It's really hard to be negative when you've never shown a negative reaction. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And so going into this business, everything around me was so positive. So what do you think I was? Positive. 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 Right? Of course there are some people that are like, this is too good to be true. Right, of course, I started my orientation with 15 people. Okay, there's only five, four of them left in the business. They're all owners. And with that being said, sorry, three, three of them. Uh, I was including myself twice. And so three of them are owners. And um, with that being said, I realized early on that the people who left, the people who didn't make it to the training were the people who had bad association and they were okay with it. Maybe, and, and like the question I have to ask you is, did you have the perfect situation or did you have the perfect reaction to your situation? Right, and that's one thing that I, want, I wanted y'all to take away is, is maybe you didn't have, don't have the perfect story. Maybe you don't have all your bills paid on right now. Maybe you don't have the perfect household right now. Maybe your parents or your significant other doesn't support the business. I, I genuinely had nothing going for me except my upline's belief in me. Like my upline believed in me so much that when my parents found out I was going door to door with a, a civil engineering, uh, engineering degree, I, I walked home to my stuff on the curb. Right, I was a month in the business and, and, and homeless. Right, I was, I was a month in the business and, and, and shunned by my family. And the moment I got shunned by my family, I was like, thank God I can come home even later now <laughs> and they won't say anything. Right. <laughs> um, it, it was really hard to leave my little sister. My little sister, she's 15. She's uh, the love of my life, hands down. Uh, this business paid for her quinceanera. Um, and, and with that being said, right, all of, some of y'all were a huge part of that. Let's leave that, you've been there from day one. Shout out. And, and with that being said, um, it, it was really hard leaving that, but it was really easy because I knew I didn't want my, my children to ever wonder what a happy meal was. I know I didn't want my children to ever look up one day and, and wonder where the water's coming from a, a, a shower head. I wanted them to wake up one day and come out of the womb retired at zero years old. <laughs> right, like that's genuinely what I wanted. So I was like, okay, I see where Chang is. 
I see where my parents are. I love my parents to death, right? I don't blame them for, for what they did. I would, I would be upset too, right? I lied to them. I told them I was, they didn't ask what I was doing, so I never said it, <laughs> right? And I genuinely didn't want to swip, swap lives with, with my mom and dad, so I just listened to my mentor more. And it's a really hard thing to do, okay? Because a lot of us, we get emotion confused with knowledge, right? Uh, uh, emotions really, really kind of, you, you ever look through like, you ever put like a pencil in water and like it, it distorts it? That, that's kind of how our, our emotions work, right? When we, when, we add, when we add knowledge plus emotions, they get distorted. We think the people closest to us know the most and that's not always the case. My parents don't know how to run a business. Okay, Richard does, and Chang does. And the way I got to learn Richard was when, when Chang found out, she walked in, she used to get at her office at 6 or 5 a.m. every single morning, because she was just an early bird. And one day she saw me sleeping in my car. And, and she was such a good leader, and I appreciate her so much for this, because I was, she knew how prideful I was still at the time. Yeah, she knew if she came straight out and said, hey, are, are you sleeping in your car? I would have faked some lie. I would have said like, no, I was just super tired from one on one, so I just slept in the car. Hi. Or hey, I got in here super early, and our laundry mat broke. I mean, our lawn, uh, what is it called? Washer, Dryer. box of air <laughs> broke. So I have all the clothes on my back of my car, kind of, right? So um, one day she says like, hey, Danny, can you stay back with me in the office? I'm like, hands down, Chang, anything for you, <laughs> right? So I stay back in the office. And she's like, hey, Danny, is this your only source of income? And I'm like, yeah. I was like, I've, I've never heard of two jobs before, except like my dad did two jobs, right? And I was like, why would I need two jobs? I was like, this, this job, I love this job. You just work harder. Like it's, you're, it's uncapped commission, you change. Like if I have a bad check, I just work harder the next one. I just stay later. And she's like, <laughs> she's like yeah, makes sense. And so she's like, um, I, I, I signed your checks. I know how much you make a month. Are you good at spending habits? I'm like, yeah, I was like, I, I was like, uh, we have something called a break even, which means your your expenses. And I was like, oh, right now I'm really good on 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 my break even, right? Because I was not living anywhere. <laughs> uh, and she's like, okay. She's like, can you afford eight hundred and fifty dollars a month? Depends what it is. And she like slid me a key. She's like to your apartment. I was like, what? And she was like, she's like, you don't have to tell me. She's like anything like that. She's like, if you can be so positive, if you can, if you can still want to grow in this business with the situation you're in, she's like, then you'll get out of your situation faster than you thought. And she's like, uh, there's someone in the business that used to be a property manager. I got in contact with them and I co-signed an apartment. Holy smokes. <laughs> and I just busted out into tears, right? I'm, uh, emotions overwhelmed me that day, right? I broke character. And, and and I was vulnerable to my upline, and I think I had the most humility to the point where, not for the first time ever, my upline saw my my personality, right? Like she saw my humility and saw that I was. If I was, if you're able to have humility, if you're able to have vulnerability, then you can get rid of pride. There's no way the two coexist. There, there's no way we just humil like pride is just an ingredient to to an unsolved problem. That's all it is. And so uh, she helped me and she's like, hey, there's this guy named Richard. You remind me a lot of him. He, he had a lot of the same things you're going through and I, I want you to meet him. And I was like, Chang, I'm the best. You know, I, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like pouring down tears and I'm like, Chang, I'm the best there is. I don't need nobody. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so uh, two weeks later, right, I was like, Chang, if, you, if you're willing to do this for me, if you're willing to invest in me, I will make you the most money ever. And it's funny because when, when you find out how willing your upline is to go for you, how willing your coach is to go for you, uh, you, you realize that it's really hard to disappoint them. You just find yourself disappointing yourself for not hitting your own standards. Make sense? Everyone know what I meant by that? Okay. And so it, it was really easy after that, right? Like if I was being prideful, I was hurting her business. If I was being egotistical, I was hurting her business. If I wasn't reaching out, if I wasn't hitting the standard, I was hurting her business. And it's really funny because when you, when you make your, your coach's goals or someone else's goals your goals, you start to realize that it's so easy to do the right thing. 
it's so easy not to lose your attitude because now you're not letting down. Anybody have a, anybody ever started going to the gym before? Anybody like been to the gym at least once? Okay. Now, now raise your hand if you still go to the gym seven days a week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Now think about that. Okay, now, now think about it. You said six? Five, five, six? Okay, cool. Right, two, two, uh, two, two for a hundred. Okay, right, so what, what that means is, think about it like this, how many of us signed up on our own? Raise your hand if you signed up on your own. Okay, think about it like that. Okay, see how, y'all saw how many hands were, were raised? Okay, the, and, and think about it like this, okay? If me, Trey, Isaiah, Devin, Jason, Asalita, Zoe, and, and Fred all went to Planet Fitness and we all got a gym membership. Okay, I don't know if that's a good gym. You can tell, okay, right? And so, with, with it. <laughs> and so with that being said, right, Imagine if we all signed up and we said, hey, every day we're gonna meet here at 6 a.m. and we're gonna, we're gonna get fit. We're gonna get our lives right and we're gonna work out for 30 minutes a day for, for five years and we're gonna get fit that way we can live a healthy life. If I'm late, if I don't show up one day, what, what's the back of my head telling me? So, I'm not the game, Okay, right, like, do you think, do you think Devin, Isaiah, Fred, Jason, Zoe, and Esli, do, do, do you think they're gonna call me? Yes. And be like, yo, why are you not here? Why are you not mm-hmm. pumping iron? You're messing up the routine, bro. Right, right, like, gym bros. <laughs> gym bros. Gym bros. Gotcha, bro. Okay, right, like, it, the, the, what I'm trying to get at is, is because it's really hard to let a team down. Mm-hmm. When, when, you, when, you, when you make yourself part of a vision, rather than part of your own self, a selfish goal, it's really hard to let it down. Have you ever noticed that leaders are are so genuinely excited? It's because they get part of the business. They are a part of the business now. You're gonna see some people get promoted pretty soon and you're gonna realize that they're they're promoted because they started treating this like it was their business a long time ago. Now, the benefits are just catching up to them. And so what I'm saying is, is, is if you're here right now and you're not where you wanna be, have you made your coach's goals your goals? Have you made your coach's goals your goals? Have you talked about your upline getting promoted? Because I promise you, think about it like this. I, who here has ever, who's met Richard in person? Oh, a lot of us haven't, right? Duh, freaking meeting. Okay, okay who, who, who talks to Richard on a weekly basis? That's a better question. Okay, one hand. Who here feels like they know Richard? Okay. Who's heard the name Richard? <laughs> you see that? We're like, that is my upline. I fight for my upline. I fight for his goals. He's done nothing but gave me a chance that when he met me two weeks later, right, when he met me, came, came to San Antonio, took time out of his business to come meet, uh, to come meet some guy, some, some ignorant, cocky, 21-year-old kid, right? He, he came to meet him because his upline asked him for a favor. He left his business and met me, and I hated him. <laughs> you know why I hated him? Because he was exactly like me. He would say a joke, and I'm like, shit, he was faster than me. <laughs> I was just about to say that. But then I saw what he had, and I saw how he cared about people, and I'm like, okay, if he can be, co- if he can be confident, and if he can be that, 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 I would call him like swaggy. Like if he, if he can carry himself with that demeanor and still impact people, I'm gonna make it through this business. And two days later, Chang sits me down and is like, Danny, I, I genuinely think Richard is the coach you need. I genuinely think that, that Richard can get you where you wanna be. So um, I'm giving you the chance to finish the training in Richard's uh, office. She told me that Friday at 10 a.m. And when I, I'm telling you, when I believe, when you believe in coaching so faithfully, nothing is ever wrong. I'm telling you, when you believe in advice, right? That's the one, one key takeaway I want you to take out today is if when you believe in advice, hundred percent, it's never the wrong advice. When you believe in the coaching hundred percent, it's not the wrong coaching ever. I guarantee it. I guarantee you that if you have 100% faith in your coach, they will never lead you wrong. And so at 10 a.m. she told me I should move to Dallas. At 7 p.m. that same day, I was moved in to Dallas. It's a six hour drive from San Antonio to Dallas. 
That means I packed in 30 minutes. I was like, done. And and I was on a Friday, Saturday, at, uh, I, I moved it to you, like actually move in. Sunday, did that. And then Monday, I was, I, was, I was at a new office. And Dallas was the best decision I ever made. If you are comfortable with where you're at right now, get out. If you are comfortable with the situation you are in, get out of that space. There's a great uh, entrepreneur that talks about his name is Grant Cardone. He says, if you are comfortable in your city, move. Because you only grow when you are in uncomfortable situations. You are only growing in uncomfortability. Adversity equals growth. Hands down. If you have a good attitude about some stuff going wrong, you will always win the day. Guarantee it. Dallas was the best decision of my life. I met the love of my life. Okay, I met the woman I'm, I'm, oh, that's retired now. Okay, right? I'm like, I'm gonna have a family with her. I got through the training. I got to run my own business four months later. My, she gets paid every single week from this business. She, she's running her own little business. My sister got $16,000 of a party paid for. Right, like I'm completely debt free. I have a, we have a car that's paid off. We have, Every, everything is, is, is to the point where, and I still live frugal. I'm not saying I don't, and, and, I, and I live the lavish life. I live very frugal. Okay, but I'm saying there is, there is something powerful about devotion. Right, like when you are devoted to saying something, when you're like, I, there's no way I'm not gonna, like when you say like, I'm gonna get a plaque with my name on it, I'm gonna become a manager of a business, I'm gonna own my own business, I'm gonna mentor 10 to 15 people, <clears throat> There's nothing that stops you. You think you're gonna lose your attitude on a no today? You think some some weather outside is, is gonna is gonna ruin your attitude? It's it's pretty freaking hard when you tell yourself I'm gonna run my own company and I'm gonna make six figures a year from now. My life is going to change. I will never worry about a bill a year from now. My sister will never have to worry about me. My family will never have to worry about me. My kids will never have to worry again in a day in their life. There's something powerful in that that you will never ever look at adversity the same. Now, does that mean adversity will never be there? No. Hands down, no. Oh my God. I'm like, I, Chang, nicest human ever. Nicest human ever. So good at making me feel so proud about my, my mistakes. Richard is like, bro, what the? Have <laughs> <laughs> yeah. y'all met Richard? Richard is not the type to have a filter. He's from Spain, 29 years old, seven figure earner, six people retired on his payroll. His kid, got retired at zero years old. He's four month old baby, has, has a property under his name, has I think like a savings account of like 150K, and Richard is, it lives in a, a tiny house. He's like, why do I need a bigger one? I have one kid. Right, and so it, money, money doesn't buy happiness, I guarantee you. If you think it does, if you think it does, it doesn't. I guarantee you it does not. But it buys freedom. And, and, and freedom gives you opportunity to do what you love. And that's what gets you happiness. So in reality, money doesn't buy it. <laughs> right? it, it, gives you the, it gives you the avenue to be happy. Money gives you the <laughs> avenue to be happy. That's just the way the world works. And you hear that person that's like, hey, I'm not interested in the money. Cool, make a lot of it, give a lot of it away. This business always gives away 10%. Right? Like the, the, this business will, in, in gross revenue, profit over six figures. We're gonna give 10% of it away. Hands down, always. I, we tithe 11% every single week, me and my person. We tithe 11% of our paycheck every single week. The more you give, the more you receive. So many of us hold on to so much money, so many of us hold on to so much pride that we reject anything else. Hands down. And I know because I was the same way. Hands down. I, I had to worry about bills. Some of you are like, hey, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't give money away. I'm still trying to hold on to it. I guarantee you, it's the reason why you don't have enough. It's because we're not giving it. Okay, give with the expectation of never receiving, and you will receive abundantly. Okay, in terms of lighter terms, right? That, that's a little bit of my story. Okay, now uh, the rest is history. We opened up our company in February 7th, first day of sales. Uh, 30 days later, the, after the business paid operating expenses, um, paid all the employees, 
and, and, and retired a couple of people. The business was still profited about 60K in 30 days. Uh, after that, we've been on the roll. We moved from Winston-Salem. We outgrew that market in about 15, oh, sorry, 24 days. Um, moved over here to Raleigh, and between me, Zach, and Alexis, we run a $1.8 million company, okay? 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, right? And, and people are happy, people are making money, people are, opportunities there. The business works as long as y'all do. The business will keep working as long as I do. Okay, this, this, we're, we're looking for lookers. What I mean by that is if you're looking for an opportunity, it's here, guarantee it. It's only not here if you're not willing to work hard. If you're, if you're, if you're worried about, the, about your current situation and you're so focused on it, then, then yeah, you're gonna have a, you're, we're, we're gonna struggle, hands up. Okay, but if you're really focused on the, on, the, on the journey to get to your destination, you're gonna be fine, guarantee it. I see people like that, like Miriam has closed her back door and every single day she reminds me, Danny, this is my plan A and this is, all, this is my plan B too. Like there, there, there's, no, there's no other way out, my family deserves it. I see the way she, she interacts with her little sisters. I, 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 see, I see the way the way she handles her family. And I'm like, wow, this girl deserves to win. This girl will earn six figures, maybe even more. She'll be a heavy hitter in this program. I, I sit down with people and I hear people's story like Ryan. And I'm like, wow, like this man can be so positive and no one would ever realize he's probably going through one of the toughest times. Right, and some of us, we come in and, and, and we're almost a jerk to some people because we're having a bad, we live in our own selfish needs and you don't understand that people, some people's story, that they have to sit in a car and be like, okay, let me, let me get my mind right before I get into this opportunity because you don't know where they're coming from. Okay, all of us have a story and all of y'all deserve to get one day to tell it to, to y'all's own company. Okay, so let's just get everyone there and, and let's get excited and, and let's go on break right now. And I love every single one of y'all. Thank y'all for this.